So I'm here in the bush on the east side of Magnetic Island, and today I'm going to do some wildlife photography. Now here on Magnetic Island, there's an abundance of wildlife. You've got a bunch of wallabies, a very strong population of koalas here on the island, as well as hundreds of species of birds. Also some reptiles and even echidnas are here on the island. So I'm setting out, hopefully I'll be able to find something to photograph. Uh, today's looking pretty nice, it's an overcast day, and since it's the middle of the day, it's a good day to shoot because the sun's not too bright, causing uh, harsh shadows. So, yeah, let's go see what we can find. Now, I've been to this area a couple times before, and I've seen a bunch of wallabies here, and also a bunch of koalas as well. So I know wildlife is present in this area. So I managed to find a spider. It's pretty cool, a decent size, about maybe an inch and a half from the tip of the leg to the tip of the leg. So I think I'm gonna set up my camera and try and take some images. Ultimately, I would want a macro lens in order to photograph the spider, but uh, my long lens works just fine. I just have to make sure I'm nine feet away because it won't focus if it's closer than nine feet. So I'm at a good distance, but still zoomed in to 550 millimeters. I'm still able to get the spider fully in frame. And it is looking pretty nice. We've got some nice light now breaking through the clouds. So I'm shooting at 1 320th of a second, f6.3, ISO 400. And what I'm doing, because since I am shooting at kind of a low shutter speed and the spider's not really moving, I'm using a five second timer. So I'm getting my composition set, everything ready to go. Then I'll hit the shutter and do the timer. That way the camera's not shaking and it's sharp. Because with the long lens, even with the sturdy tripod and everything, even just touching the shutter button will cause camera shake and cause the images to be a little bit blurry. And I also had to manual focus on it just because it's such a small subject and the plane of focus even at 6.3 is so small. I had to look at the viewfinder and manually focus it so I can again make sure that I get a sharp image. So off to a pretty good start so far. Saw a spider, not too exciting, but still kind of interesting. And as I was photographing the spider, I actually saw a wallaby, maybe 100 meters off that way. It got startled when I turned my camera, but I think I might wait here for a little bit to see if it comes back or to see if any others come back. We're really starting to get some really nice light now. It's still overcast, so the light's still a bit diffused, so it's kind of nice. But I'm going to wait here in this location for a bit because I do have a nice field of view and there are plenty of wallabies in the area. Plus there's a bunch of tracks and scat that I've found. So it is a prime spot for wallabies. So I'm just going to sit here for an hour or so and hopefully I'll see some more.
So I'm back here at the car. It started raining off and on, and I didn't really want my gear to get too soaked, so I decided to call it a day. And it's uh, starting to get dark out a little bit anyway, so uh, I'm going to pick this video up tomorrow and do some more photography. I'm hiking back here to my spot. I end up spotting two wallabies, so I stop to take an image really quick. There's one pretty close. I'm gonna try and move and see if I can get a picture of the one to my left because he's pretty close. So normally these wallabies here always get really afraid and never let me get close or if they find out that I'm here they'll run away. But this one's being very uh, very docile and not being afraid very easy. So it's pretty cool to be this close to them. And now I've got another one just right in front of me. I gotta move. pretty quick. So it is a little bit of challenging conditions to shoot today because it's not quite overcast like it was yesterday. So the highlights are very bright and also it's challenging shooting through the forest because there's just so many branches and leaves and weeds in the way it's hard to get focused so I'm doing a lot of manual focus. So not all of my images are coming out sharp, but a few of them are. It's still wonderful to be able to spend time with these animals here. And even me talking isn't bothering him. And it's hard too, because the wallabies have white on their face, and when they go into the sun, the sunlight makes it real bright and causes all that to get blown out. So I gotta make sure that I'm underexposing so I can recover those highlights later in post-processing. just saw a koala that was running on the ground, so I ran after it with my camera. I've been photographing it for a while because it kept moving from tree to tree and running around. And I also found that it has a baby. It's a pretty spectacular sight. I just snuck over to get my uh, camera bag and my video camera because my batteries are starting to run low on my big camera, so I've got to change them. I hope she's still there. Oh, I'm making so much noise. So the mama koala is still there. 
it's just right up in the tree. So this is a very unique experience right here because this koala is actually feeding as well and she has her little baby on her back and never before in all my couple months of coming out in the bush finding koalas I haven't seen one with a baby and I haven't seen one actually feeding so this is pretty good. And she's not even bothered by my presence at all. So when I came over here, because I saw her out of the corner of my eye when I was sitting over there, I saw her run on the ground and I came over here and couldn't find her because she just froze. And then I kind of stopped and waited for a bit, and then she climbed up a tree really fast, looked around, and then I think maybe thought I wasn't a threat or just completely disregarded I was there, then ran down the tree, ran up another one, down the tree, up another one, and now she's doing the same thing, just uh, feeding on one tree, then she'll hop to another one just feeding on all these eucalyptus leaves. Not sure if I got any good images though of the mom or the baby just because it's very challenging because they keep moving and going in between branches so there's branches in the way causing the their faces not to be completely sharp and with it being the middle of the day and not overcast the Sun is so bright so it's causing for some high contrast in the images and uh, it's also I'm having trouble blowing out their fur because their fur is white but still it's an amazing experience that's I've never seen a koala this active before, especially during this time of the day, because they're mostly nocturnal, so most of the time they do all their eating and stuff at night. So all I'm doing now is just kind of moving around where the koala is sitting just to try different compositions and just different lighting to see what works the best. But so far the koala is very docile and isn't bothered by my presence at all. It's not at all timid. the koalas seem to get a little bit tired now they're closing their eyes and taking a nap so I'm gonna hang out here for probably around another hour I still have several hours until sunset but hopefully the light will start getting a bit better and that they stay up here and then maybe become a little bit more active towards sunset and I'll just keep uh, taking photographs and keep filming them a little bit so as I'm waiting here watching the koalas there's another wallaby just right across the riverbank over there everywhere in this area. It's great. Mm. 
I've whinged about the koalas before, but as they are pretty amazing, they are kind of boring, especially when they start to sleep. Like these guys are now in napping mode and they don't want to do anything. Which makes it challenging for photography because you want to get the picture of their eyes in the frame, and with their eyes closed all the time it just makes for kind of boring images. So every now and then the baby will look over at me and I gotta make sure I'm quick so I can try and take a picture just while he's looking. There we go. So for settings, what I'm trying to do is just keep the aperture open as much as possible because I want that nice uh, blur in the image and also the shutter speed I'm just adjusting as necessary and the ISO I'm jumping between 800 and 400. I don't usually like to go too high with the ISO but I do need to use a pretty fast shutter speed otherwise the images won't be sharp so I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of noise for sharpness. So ISO 800 isn't too bad and uh, my camera here can kind of handle that pretty well without introducing too much noise. So we're starting to get some really nice light on the koalas. Because as the sun's setting though, it's creeping its way up the tree so the light's not going to last long at all. They are starting to eat again and they're kind of climbing up the tree more so it is getting a little bit challenging to photograph them because there's a lot more branches and leaves in the way. So I kind of just move around to the left and the right and try and find a clear spot to where I can shoot them. So that's all for today's video. It's starting to get dark, so I'm gonna head back. Uh, today was a very good day for wildlife photography. I got to see some wallabies and koalas and even a baby koala. Normally when I do wildlife photography, I'll come out day after day and see nothing. So today was very lucky and I even was able to get a few good images. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you later.